Good morning. Welcome back. Today is May 24th, 2022. We're going to be reading 1 Samuel 30 and 31, John 8, 12 through 47, Psalm 84, 1 through 4, Revelation 19, and Psalm 91. I'm just waking up, so haven't gotten perky perk yet. How are you today? Jesus is pure truth. If God lives in your heart and the blessing of truth is always available to you, helping you discern what is right for your life. Jesus never promised your pathway would be easy, but he did promise to never leave you. Truth is always with you, and you can call upon him in every circumstance to light your way. Amen. Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 32. What are your top three priorities today? What's on your schedule to do list? Write it down so you don't forget. What are your reflections on today's Bible reading after we read our Bible? What do you want to remember from May 24th, 2022? How are you doing on your healthy journey? What are some goals that you have of becoming healthier and making healthier choices today? Better than yesterday. For your body, mind, soul, for your healthy relationships. Or healthier. Maybe you don't have healthy relationships or a healthy relationship that you want to repair in your life. And you want to make it healthier. Boundaries. I didn't know about boundaries until I was an adult. Um... I have learned boundaries and it's been very, very, very hard for my family to abide by my new boundaries, uh, the boundaries that I have set for me and my health and my sanity and um, what, I, what I can absolutely handle. Um, so that's been over the last several years. <laughs> that I have all of a sudden, whoa, Shannon has boundaries. <laughs> yes, Shannon has boundaries now. Now I have boundaries and I set my boundaries and I'm not perfect. Um, but um, I do know what I can and cannot handle. I know what is being thrown at me, what I want to take and what I don't want to take. Um so I have and will continue to set boundaries in my life for me and my health and um, for my sanity in surviving this crazy world. And uh, that's been good for me. It, it's been a good, healthy journey for me with relationships. And learning more about myself and what me, what part of me or parts of me are the problem and what I need to work on to be part of the healthy process and what I can do or stop doing that is not helping what I'm trying to achieve to become the healthy relationship. Being in God's word and constantly looking to Christ for all things, no matter how small or how great, has helped me immensely. Stopping, stepping back and going, okay, God, and literally having a verbal conversation with him, me on my end, saying, God, this is what I want. This is where I want to go. Um, this is happening. I don't understand. Help me to understand. Um, 
and literally talking out loud to God and working through my things with him. And um, that's helped me a lot. And he'll give me the answers or he says to stop, rest, pray, think, stop. It's not time yet. You know, whatever the reasoning that he has that I need to just stop. I've learned that over the last probably 10 years or so that when he says stop, he's going to, if I don't listen, he's going to stop me. Whatever that is, he's going to stop me. So I stop. So I've tried to listen so he doesn't have to make me stop. And I just stop on my own and say, okay, all right, let's recalibrate. Let's take a step back. Okay. Let's take a deep breath. Let's you know, okay, we know that's not the way that we want that to be, or that's not how we want that to have turned out. And it's worked pretty well on my end. Now, the other people on the other end that has not experienced that boundary or any of those boundaries have... Some have come on board, some have slowly come on board, some have not come on board at all, and that breaks my heart, but um, I got to do what's right for me and what's healthy for me. So, the truth shall set you free, and that is so true. The truth through Christ will set you free. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with humble hearts and humble minds. Holy Spirit, we immediately invite you in. We want you to permeate our lives, our day, today, our reading. Do what only you can do, Holy Spirit. Direct us in your ways. Show us the truth. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your son who died on the cross for our sins. We thank you for your grace. Thank you for health and wealth. Thank you for family. We thank you for boundaries, healthy boundaries. Be with our loved ones wherever they may be. Be with us as we read through your word today. We desire to be closer to you and to be, to be obedient to you, Lord. Bless this time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. No, too early. <laughs> I I felt the crackling in my, <laughs> my throat and I was like, mm, nope, nope. Has, has it gotten lubed up yet? <laughs> So I'll exercise my <clears throat> <clears throat> with first Samuel 30 and 31. First Samuel 30 and 31. David and his men reached Ziglag on the third day. Now the Amicalites had raided the Negev and Ziglag. They had attacked Ziglag and burned it and had taken captive the women and all who were in it, both young and old. <clears throat> they killed none of them, but carried them off as they went on their way. When David and his men came to Ziglag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. David's two wives had been captured. Ah Ahinoam and Jezreel, of Jezreel, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was greatly distressed because the men were taking, talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abathar, the priest, the sons of Ahimelech, Bring me the ephod. Abathar 
brought it to him and David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? <clears throat> pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and, ex and succeed in the rescue. David and the 600 men with him came to the Besor Ravine, where some stayed behind for 200 men were too exhausted to cross the ravine. But David and 400 men continued the pursuit. They found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat, part of a cake of pressed figs and two cakes of raisins. He ate and was revived, for he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David asked him, to whom do you belong and where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian, the slave of an Amicalite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Negev of the Karathites and the territory belonging to Judah and the Negev of Caleb. And we burned Zik Ziklag. David asked him, can you lead me down to this raiding party? He answered, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master and I will take you down to them. He led David, he led, he led David down and there they were scattered over the countryside, eating, drinking and reveling because <clears throat> of the great amount of plunder they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from Judah. David fought them from dusk until evening of the next day, and none of them got away except 400 young men who rode off on camels and fled. David recovered everything the Amicalites had taken, including his two wives. Nothing was missing, young or old, boy or girl, plunder or anything else they had taken. David brought everything back. He took all the flocks and herds and his men drove them ahead of the other livestock saying, this is David's plunder. Then David came to the 200 men who had been too exhausted to follow him and who were left behind at the Besor Ravine. They came out to meet David and the people with him. <clears throat> As David and his men approached, he greeted them. But all the evil men and troublemakers among David's followers said, because they did not go out with us, we will not share with them the plunder we recovered. However, each man may take his wife and children and go. David replied, no, my brothers, you must not do that with, the, with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and handed over to us the forces that came against us. Who will listen to what you say? The share of the man who destroy, who stayed with the supplies is to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All will share alike. David made this a statute, an ordinance for Israel from that day to this. When David arrived in Ziklag, he sent some of the plunder to the elders of Judah, who were his friends, saying, Here is a present for you, from the plunder of the Lord's enemies. <clears throat> Excuse me. He sent it to those who were in Bethel, Ramoth, Negev, and Jatar. To those in Aror, Sifmoth, Eshtemoa, and Rakal. To those in the towns of the Jeremalites, the Kenites, and those in Horma, Bor, Ashan, Ephak, and Hebron, and those, and to those in all the other places where David and his men had roamed. <coughs> Excuse me. Chapter thirty-one. Now the Philistines fought against Israel. The Israelites fled before them, and many fell slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines pressed hard after Saul and his sons, and they killed his sons Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malkishua. The fighting grew fierce around Saul, and when the archers 
overtook him, they wounded him critically. Saul said to his armor bearer, draw your swords and run me through or these uncircumcised fellows will come and run me through and abuse me. <clears throat> but his armor bearer was terrified and would not do it. So Saul took his own sword and fell on it. When the armor bearer saw that, that Saul was dead, he too fell on his sword and died with him. So Saul and his three sons and his ar armor bearer and all his men died together that same day. When the Israelites along the valley and those across the Jordan saw that the Israelite army had fled and that Saul and his sons had died, they abandoned their towns and fled and the Philistines came and occupied them. The next day, when the Philistines came to strip the dead, they found Saul and his three sons fallen on Mount Gilboa. <coughs> they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and they sent messengers throughout the land of the Philistine to proclaim the news in the temple of their idols and among their people. They put his armor in the temple of the Ashtoreths and fastened his body to the wall of Beth Shan. When the people of Jabesh Gilead heard of what the Philistines had done to Saul, all their val valiant men journeyed through the night to Beth Shan. They took down the bodies of Saul and his sons from the evil wall of Beth Shan and went to Jabesh, Jabesh, where they burned them. Then they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree at Jabesh, and they fasted for seven days. That's the end of 1 Samuel. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We're getting there. <coughs> amen. All righty. John eight twelve through forty seven. John 8, 12 through 47. John 8, 12 through 47. Jesus is the light of the world. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I came from or where I am going. <clears throat> You judge my human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two men is valid. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they ask him, where is your father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. <clears throat> If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke those words while teaching in the temple area near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his time had not yet come. Once more, Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is that why he says, where I go, you cannot come? But he continued, you are from below. I am from above. You are this of this world. I am not of this world. I am not of this world. 
I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be. You will indeed die in your sins. Who are you? They asked. Just what I have been claiming all along, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is reliable. And what I have heard from him, I tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, <clears throat> when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the father's presence and you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things of your own father does, things your own father does. We are not Ill illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I come from God and now am here. I am not, I have not come on my own, but he has sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet, because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Amen. <clears throat> Moving on to Psalm 84, 1 through 4. Psalm 84, 1 through 4. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself. Where she may have her young, a place near your altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Amen. Revelation 19. <clears throat> 
Revelation 19. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. <clears throat> He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again, they shouted, Hallelujah. The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God, who was seated on the throne. And they cried, Amen. Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him a glory for the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, clean was given to her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Then the angel said to me, right, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. At this, I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Verse 11, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. Faithful and true. Hmm. Faithful and true. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Amen. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, come gather together for the great supper of God so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty men of horses and their riders and the flesh of all people, free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured. And with him, the false prophet who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his message. his image mark of the beast and worshiped his image the two of the men were thrown alive into the fiery lake of the burning sulfur the rest of them were killed with a sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh amen 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 <sighs> conclude today's Bible reading May 24th 2022 with Psalm 91 my fave 
he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Um... I have said many, many a times that I don't really know what's going on. Um, there is something going on in the world. Um, it is between good and evil. I do know that. But I don't know what the agendas are on the good side. I don't know what what their plan is. What If it's true, if it's good, if it's in their own interests, not the people's. Um, I do know that God is in control, but I also know that we, the people, need to turn back to God and his ways and not the world's ways. Um, I don't know every strategy of the evildoers. Um, I do know that the evil, not the evil spirits, my Holy Spirit tells me um, when just something just is off and isn't right and isn't exactly how it's being presented. And um, I'm trying to discern moving forward um, all the chatter of, you know, what's going on, what's to come, what's, um, what are your thoughts on how are you preparing for our future? What are you changing for the better towards Christ, towards a wholesome life as God designed for our family unit? Um, what are things that you're doing to prepare? Um, there's talk of things getting way worse than what they've been in the last few years. And um, I'm not sure if it's going to get to that point. Again, I don't know really what's going on. I just listen to my Holy Spirit and go, okay, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Um, personally, uh, I am debt free. My business was not, it's never been debt free because I bought the business and I had to borrow to buy the business. So I have always been in debt with my small business. Um, I've had it for, this October will be five years. And um, we've been in debt the whole entire time. And with the pandemic and everything going on with that, put us even further behind. But um, I've always wanted to be you know, out of debt with the business and it's been a priority, um, but it's been tough and it's been really, really tough to just pay bills, let alone um, get out of debt the last couple of years. But it's really pressing on my heart. You need to get out of debt. You need to get out of debt. You need to make that a priority. You need to hurry up and get out of debt and not owe anyone anything. Um, that's a priority of mine. 
um, that I really feel is is pressing that I really need to make a priority. Um, I've stockpiled a little bit, but not like crazy amounts for years and years of water, food, so on and so forth. Um, but I think that it's it's wise for us to prepare um, for the worst. And then if the worst doesn't come, then that's okay. We, we are prepared. Um, so just be thinking, you know, listening to your Holy Spirit to, um, doing things that you feel that God is leading you to do and to be and, um, to think and say, and, um, every step that you take, um, through the Lord. Thank you for joining me today, May 24th, 2022, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Be blessed.